Hey guys, it is Chad here from the Battle Warrior Podcast, and I'm just letting all you listeners know that the Battle Warrior Podcast episodes will be available across all podcast platforms, guys. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this brand new episode today. I was to say, let's roll. We're laughing already. So let's roll. It's like, hey guys, welcome to Battleware Podcast. We have a phenomenal guest that's actually been waiting for two years to join the show. Uh, Taylor Proctor here, guys. She is an entrepreneur, speaker, and creator. And we're going to change that coding a little bit, like you were saying there, but uh, and creator. So guys, she's got over 550 episodes here with her podcast, Creating with Confidence. Uh, and we're just going to go into a little depth here, but like motivating, providing value, happiness, mindset, marketing, money, guys. It Definitely a big deal to have her on the show here. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be on. Um, no, we're, we were having a conversation here uh, before recording and I'm sitting here. I'm like, you know what? I want to tap in a few of these questions. And, and, and we already talked about, you know, before this exactly what it is, but I'm like, I'm having her on and I want to ask her about the orange and I want to ask her about the hay jam. So go ahead. <laughs> well, let's go with orange first. Uh, so orange is my favorite color. And uh, it's been my favorite color since, oh, I think third grade. I don't think I really had a favorite color until third grade. Uh, It was kind of like, oh, I like everything. And then third grade hit. And for some reason, orange just became the color. Uh, And I think it may have been, I don't consciously know this, but I had a teacher say in third grade to my mom, oh, she's like a tigger. She's just jumping around class. She's hyperactive. Like she's, she's engaging everybody. She just bounces around from thing to thing. And so I, she like just kind of named me Tigger a little bit, Tigger Taylor. And from there, I was just like, let's adopt it. Let's go. <laughs> and uh, orange became the thing. And uh, it's really kind of, it's like my power color. I love it. Uh, and it just made natural sense to integrate it into my branding, which is funny though, because my brand originally, which as you can see behind me is the, uh, infinity sign. And when I originally started my business, my favorite color at the time, uh, was rose gold. And this was before rose gold got popular, but it got popular, which is great. Cause I didn't have the hunt for rose gold jewelry anymore, but, uh, it was rose gold, which is in its own right, a form of orange. <laughs> And so when I looked at like transitioning from the more metallics to some uh, stronger brand colors, it was an easy transition to go to orange and uh, pretty much everything in my life has some orange flair to it. Orange clothing, uh, rose gold jewelry, my Porsche is orange. (laughs) Like there's just everything is orange, but it's really fascinating too, because it's not just like, oh yeah, it's my favorite color. I threw it on. And it's also not like, oh, I very specifically did this for my brand. It is like my power color, but it also the like psychological piece and representation of orange is all about like spontaneity, creativity, connection, and confidence. And it's fascinating because through the evolution of my business and me as a person, those are the things that I really embody as well. And so orange is orange is orange. It's my favorite color. And it really seems to represent me and my brand. Well, and it's not going anywhere. And, and I know, I know we were talking about this and I'm sitting here, I'm like, I'm trying to go through and for some odd reason with the color branding, my brain went to fast food right away. And it's not because (laughs) of that. It's just because of the, the eye locking, because that industry is so phenomenal at locking you in on a color. Yeah. And, and I'm like, wow. I'm, and we're going through a list and I'm like, okay, so chick flag Culver's and I'm, I'm like, there's only one fast food joint that's got not red, not yellow in it. And which is the one that's actually from my state. And I'm like, I wonder why it was blue. Yeah. Well, what's interesting about that too, is like, if you think about healthcare companies for a second, so think about your insurance provider, most of the time they will be blue or green. Yeah. So let me see. United's blue. Yep. Uh, well, American, pa- yeah, yeah, you are correct. Cause American yeah. family is blue. So blue oh. is like a representation of trust and stability. And so that makes sense that if you're 
trusting someone with your insurance and all these things, like they naturally gravitate to like a blue. You have a similar kind of concept with uh, airlines. Delta has a Navy blue. United has a blue. Frontier, I think, is blue. Uh, Alaska is blue. Like they're either blues or greens as well. You might have Southwest or Delta that have a little bit of a red or a yellow as well. But for the most part, they also have a blue type of component. So it's fascinating to look at like the color psychology when it comes to creating a brand um, and whether it happens kind of naturally like mine did, uh, which is so funny because I will get people will send me messages and be like, I saw this pen has orange and I thought of you. And I'm like, that's awesome because you want to be top of mind for your, for your clients and your potential customers. And if you can do that to even just a color, like that's a really cool concept to be able to adopt into your business, into your branding. But yeah, color psychology in businesses, fast food restaurants are the yellow and the red always, there's usually always a red and, uh, blues and greens or healthcare and like manufacturing type of stuff. So it's just fascinating to see kind of that, that, uh, scale of what the colors can represent on a subconscious level. Well, and, and I'm sitting there going through the whole spectrum. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, you could pull into a city of multi-million people. And I'm, I'm going to use yours, for example, which is a couple million, I'm guessing by the mm-hmm. time you add everything up within two seconds, they know exactly who you are. Yep. And, and I'm like, you just separated yourself naturally. And you don't even know about it. Yeah. And that's, the, that's the power of color branding for sure. That's in, that's insane. Um, and I was going to say that the next, we're going to roll in the next question here, but sure. the thing I, I'm asking you, I wanted to be specific on this question because we can go into business, we can go into marketing and all that. And I'm like, something so goofy and corny has almost become an everyday occurrence for you. Yes. So I, I tell my husband jokes and my husband's name is James. So, uh, you will find videos of me where it's my husband trapped in the car (laughs) with me. And I will, you know, start off with, Hey James. And then I will tell a super corny pun dad joke. Uh, and it's, it's interesting because it's very similar to the orange in the fact that it's just me, right? I'm not doing it with this conscious, like strategic purpose. However, if I wanted to look at it that way, I mean, we could talk about no like and trust factor and a whole bunch of other things that that can apply to, but ultimately it was, it's just me telling my husband these jokes that I laugh my butt off at. And he just kind of groans and rolls his eyes <laughs> and they actually started funny enough, they didn't start in the car. They started in Disneyland. So we went and visited Disneyland in uh, January of 2020. So right before everything (laughs) hit the fan and got shut down. And uh, I was like, I want to, I want to go around and, and tell you like these funny jokes that are all Disney themed. Right. And so it was like, um, what's a ghost's favorite fruit. And I would say it in front of the haunted mansion. And I'd be like, boo berries, like, (laughs) Or like, uh, we were in front of the like princess pavilion, the Royal theater area. And it's what's the, what's, um, who's, who is the funniest Disney princess Rapunzel. (laughs) And it was just funny things like that. And I get a huge kick out of them. What was funny is he would start to like walk off the screen. Cause like we'd be recording and he'd walk (laughs) away. And so after Disney, I was like, we've got to keep this going. Cause I just have so much fun with it. And that's ultimately it. Like it's not for anybody else. It's, it's for me. And I just have a lot of fun with it. And he's so good natured about it. He actually has a good time with it too. And so then we just started doing it in the car when we were going places and it's, it's funny. It's kind of become this it's become this weird thing because when he'll go, like, if we go to like a conference or something, if I go by myself, people will be like, Oh, I love your jokes. Or I'll speak from stage and I'll open up for like a Q and a, and inevitably someone will say, I don't have a question. I loved everything you had to say. Will you tell a joke from stage? And I'm like, absolutely. Right. So yeah, yeah. it's become this thing. But when my husband comes with me to events, people walk up to him and go, Hey James, and then tell him a joke. <laughs> And it's become this thing for him too, where he's just like, I got all these people coming up and telling me jokes. And I'm like, I don't know. It's its own thing now. And it's kind of taken on its, uh, it's kind of taken on its own, its own track, its own area. 
but it's just been, it's been a real adventure and I love being able to find these jokes. And I think ultimately though, it really is just me being me. I love corny jokes and I love jokes that aren't um, derogatory or rude or putting down to other people. Right. It's just like good, wholesome fun. And I want like, if someone sees a video of me coming up I, and it starts off with, Hey James, like I want them to be able to put it on play with their kids in the car and they all laugh at the same time and not be worried about, Oh wow, that went rogue or, you know, anything like that. And so it's just good, clean, wholesome fun, which is what I, as a person genuinely love. And it's just kind of taken on a mind of its own, which is really funny. Well, in, in the saying that you have at the end of your website, I'm sitting there looking at, it, I'm like, it's the trust in yourself, create from a space of love and, and have some fun and all that stuff. And I'm just paraphrasing on this stuff. I'm like, wait a minute. It's just all these, all these goofy, I don't want to use the term mess ups, not that, but like just oddball curveball stuff is dropping your, or dropping the guard, dropping the, and increasing the trust with people. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's brilliant. Well, and I mean, if you do want to look at it with like that, that lens, it really is like immediately upon seeing, and I talk about this when I speak from stage and I talk about creating content for your business is immediately, you know, who I am, you understand my sense of humor and you either like it or you don't. And the more of them that you see, the more that trust gets built up of who I actually am as a person, because it's consistent because it's me. I'm not showing up in any other way. It's an authenticity component, but it's just me showing up and having fun, but it builds that like, you know what to expect, you like it and you start to trust and you're like, okay, so what else do you do? Cause this is so off the wall, but I love it. Like what else do you have going on? And ultimately for me, like in my business, I am a, at the highest level, I'm a confidence coach. I help business owners and coaches step into their authentic selves and confidently create, right? Create their business, create their life, create the relationships, whatever it may be for them, but create with confidence. And, and, and that oh, starts sorry, by ahead. being, that starts by being yourself and telling the funny jokes that people grown out, grown at, and your husband would walk out of the frame if he wasn't trapped in the car. <laughs> That's where the magic is at. Like, yeah. like yourself talking, I'm like, she's just absolutely brilliant. Cause she just separated herself naturally. She can sort through our customers without, you know, anyone involved. You're not, I mean, yes, you have your discovery calls and stuff. I get that, but you literally just naturally pushed everyone away that doesn't, I don't want to say doesn't in a nice way of saying, doesn't like the personality, or whatever, but I'm like, doesn't jive. Yeah. I'm like, that's absolutely brilliant. Cause you're doing it naturally. Yeah. And I think like to go on, I am also mid thirties yeah. <laughs> and I love that you're, you found that out in high school. So like or in college, because for me, it's actually relatively recent in the last like four to five years where I've really stepped into who am I like without, for me, it's always been the professional, like you got to be professional. And if you want to go clear back to like junior high, I often was told by peers that I'm loud and hyper and annoying. And so that got shut down. Right. And you yeah. gotta be professional. And if you are positive and upbeat and you talk fast and all these things that I am, you're also seen as like unprofessional and unintelligent. And so I really shut down a lot of who I was for the sake of like my corporate career. And as I look back, there's always been these inklings where like, if I'm really passionate about something, all of a sudden the big bubbly and happy and like this really big energy comes out. And that's what people are either like, I'm in, or they're like, oh no, no, that's not for me. And I've started to be okay with that. And uh, I, to share a quick story, I was speaking at a conference and it was a digital conference and I was their keynote kickoff speaker. So like I kicked off the whole conference for them, had a full hour to speak. And at the end of it, I was, we were kind of doing that crossover that you do. And so I was bantering with the host and there was two of them and I've been on their podcast a couple of times and a few things like that. So we knew each other. And one of the hosts said in front of their entire audience to me on stage, yeah, you know what? I just, I hate every time we bring you to speak. And I was like huh, huh, on the run. Cause I'm on a public stage going, what is happening? Yeah. And He's like, and it was like an 8 a.m. 
my time thing. And he's like, yeah, I just hate every time that we bring you on to speak because you are so like, you have so much energy and you're so positive and you have all these things. And it's like, it, it, it's like, holy cow, what are we doing here? And I was like, oh, and way back in the day that would have wrecked me. Yeah. Right. Because it was seen as unprofessional and I was too much for everybody in the room or, you know, all these things. And I was like, oh, well, you know, if that's, there's two ways to look at that. You know, one is if it bothers you, then, uh, that's just something we keep in mind for later or, or we look at why that's like kind of poking your buttons a little bit and see what it is about that, that bothers you and maybe fix that. And meaning I'm not fixing it. I'm going to be me. But (laughs) if you are triggered by my positive, happy, upbeat personality, why is that triggering you? And like, let's solve for that. And immediately he was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, we're good. Like he was trying to be jokey, but it was just fascinating to be able to look back and go, wow, so long ago, that would have wrecked me to the point where I would have been afraid to come up on stage. I would never have taken a keynote kickoff conference presentation again, because people need to be awake for my energy or all these things that could have come into play. But the truth of it is, is from the business perspective, I had more people reach out to me after I spoke at that conference at 8 a.m., full energy of who I am, P.S., because I wake up at five. So I was been up for hours. <laughs> Probably had a half gallon of coffee and you were ready to roll. <laughs> I actually don't drink caffeine. Oh. It, it makes me really like it slows me down. But anyways, uh, I had so many people reach out to me after that. And it was just this fascinating look at being able to step into who you actually are and knowing that there are people who are going to really resonate with that. And there are people who are not. And if you worry about the people who are not, you are shortchanging not only the people who could resonate with you, but you're shortchanging most importantly yourself to live your best life. So for me, it's all about like confidently becoming who you're meant to be and unabashedly being you. And, and I'm going to throw in a couple people in here and I, I usually don't like to eavesdrop and name drop on my podcast, but like Pat Hilton's a phenomenal host. He does that. He comes up, he's just boom, hundred miles an hour. Secondly, uh, Eric Thomas is the same way because I'm like t-shirt hat. I'm like going through my head. I'm like, okay, so all these guys that are out freely being themselves, I'm like, they would have failed in speech class because the teacher, like you have a hat on, you have a t-shirt on, you have all this on. And I'm like, yeah, but they're number one in the world. I'm like, why, why like what school stop doing this? Yeah. Well, it's because people really want and can feel when you have, I'm going to say like the veil of professionalism yeah. or the veil of, I've got to behave this certain way to be accepted. And other people can see that. And you're never truly accepted because also you're not truly accepting yourself. And that can, that causes such a ripple effect. And so when people can stand up and be themselves, people gravitate towards that because we've all been in that position of, okay, what's the right, what's the right way to behave here. And truth of it is, is the second that we get caught in, and I say this within grounds. So as long as it's moral, legal, and ethical, right. But we get caught in this, there has to be a right way or a wrong way. And the truth of it is, is there is no right. There is no wrong. There is no good. There is no bad within moral, legal, ethical grounds, right? But there, there is none of that. And the second you attach those labels is this, and you judge on those labels is the second that you shut yourself down. Like there is no bad way to behave from stage. There's, I came and I spoke and I can learn and I can shift and I grow from that. And I connected with my audience or I came, I learned, I spoke, I can grow from that. I shifted, I can connect with my audience. Like there is, there is no good or bad in those types of scenarios. It's only the labels we put on ourselves. And those labels can really limit our ability to grow. It, in my mind, I'm like, just go make a mess, figure out what you messed up on and, and go have some fun. That's where it's going. Which frankly is more than most people do. Yeah. Right. Like it's, it's funny that you bring up like the, I'm going to say we're elder millennials um, because I actually watched a TikTok the other day and they were talking about how as marketers, as elder millennials, we grew up not really having a lot of social media, like MySpace days and and Facebook, but then Instagram was really kind of where we came into our own on social. And Instagram was very much about the curated perfection type of vibes. 
And so a lot of millennial creators and business owners feel like everything has to be perfect because we were kind of groomed that it had to be that way. Yep. And social has completely changed to give us the real, give us the on the fly TikTok video, tell us what's actually happening and be you and get embraced for that and be able to monetize that if you wanted to. And as millennials, we struggle with that because we had years and years and years of it has to be perfectly curated and perfectly posted to be able to get traction. And so not only is there a school component, like you briefly touched on, but I think also our generation really has to overcome this perfectionist mindset that is keeping us completely chained in the corner. And, and, and I was explaining that to my sister. She's four years ahead of me. And, and I'm sitting there going, I'm like, I think we're the last gap between going out, making a mess out in the playground and, and cause computers came in our life a little bit. I mean, we had them early on, but like the big push came when I was what, 14, 15, 16. And, and I'm like everything now, especially like, and I'm gonna use like my earlier childhood or um, not earlier childhood, but like my nieces and nephews and all that stuff where they grew up literally one year old, they have technology, not in their yeah. hands, but it's in their life right away. And I'm like, are we that lost art where we still have that experience of, Hey, we still have a phone on the wall. So we got to go out and, and, and make, and make friends all at the playground instead of just doing everything over Skype, instead of doing, you know, in a, in a positive way, Skype is phenomenal yeah. or, or zoom. Yeah. I think that I wouldn't say so much in our childhood because I feel like, yeah, we did have to have those skills, but those skills aren't as they're relevant now but they're relevant and more in a digital space. But if you look at like the time frame of our twenties, that's when there was a lot like social media really started to take hold. And like, perfect example is you, like, thanks to technology, you and I are talking and you're clear across the United States from me. Yep. Like that is really cool. And we have an opportunity to connect, not even over like zoom or through this podcast episode, but we've connected for two years on this premise of technology. And so I think that it has been incredibly helpful, but I do think that because we are in that little bit of that in-between where it was like, be really aware of your societal standing. I'm gonna say like you behave this way in this situation in person, we're hyper aware of what that looks like online. Whereas maybe the newer generations or younger generations are less hyper aware of the in-person piece and they can more authentically show up as themselves online because that's been the standard from the beginning. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's insane to look at it the opposite way. Um, but I wanna transition here into the, the awesome program you're just starting here in the next couple or uh, I want to say a month ago, a month or two ago. No, actually, I launched it uh, last week. <laughs> awesome. Um, let's 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 go deep into the quantum power days. And I know we were talking about this before. You know, we we yeah. hit it recording here. But I'm like, wow, this is specific. Like, I want to bring this up here. So, explain to my listeners exactly what quantum power days are. Yes. So it is a new service offering that I'm doing, and I'm actually only opening it up to four business owners and coaches uh, a month. And it can be a subscription model. So if somebody signed up for like three months at a time, a quarter at a time, there's one person that there's only three spots left. But anyways, so it is a exactly what it sounds like. It's a quantum power day. So it's really taking six hours in a day and going side by side. So uh, for instance, like for you, you're on the other side of the country. We would do Zoom calls. Uh, I actually have a client who is in Minnesota that we did this with. But uh, we do Zoom calls if you're local towards where I am, which is Salt Lake City, Utah, then we could meet in person or do half and half. But essentially, it's six hours in a single day that we really tap into your innate power. Turn it on because every person is powerful, but it's kind of like being in your house where it's like if you don't turn on the light switch, you don't turn on the appliance, like the power is there, but it's not doing anything. Okay. And as business owners, as entrepreneurs, as creators, we've got the power it's taking that next step and taking the action. So what we do is we go to like your to accomplish list, this list of things that you've had, and maybe there's something on there or a few things on there that you've had on your list for three weeks that you're like, I just need to do this. And I'm not quite sure how, so I keep on procrastinating it, or this is a needle moving activity. And for some reason, I just can't get myself to do it. And so in that six hours, like I sit side by side with you or across the zoom and we co-work and we, so we co-work and we 
guide and go together in helping you accomplish that list of items that are, have been on your list for a hot minute. But also we look at like the beliefs. So if it's something you know how to do, it's a big needle moving thing. And you're like, I just can't get myself to do it. The chances are that there's a limiting belief there, or there's a thought that's keeping you back that you're just not aware of. And so in that six hour time frame, we knock off like all these amazing things on your list. And it's so funny too, because it's six hours and that feels like a long time. And then you're like, wow, this thing that's been on my list for months, we just knocked out in one hour and I've got five more to go to like totally just hit the ground running. And so by the end of it, we've cleared a whole bunch of beliefs and break and had these massive breakthroughs. We've tapped into your innate power and gotten so many things that are needle needle moving for your business completed that it really is like you have a quantum leap in your business by tapping into that power. Hence quantum power days. So it's a really like, I'm super excited about it. Uh, and it's funny enough, it actually was not a service that I came up with. I actually had a potential client who became a client reach out and say, I know you're the person to help me with this. Do you offer something like this? And I was like, I do now. <laughs> Absolutely. Cause it's amazing. And we did it and it was so phenomenal. And I was like, I just have to open this up to other people because imagine like, especially as entrepreneurs and business owners, like you have those days where you're, and you have that list and you know, you need to do it and you just can't step into it. And so to have a whole day where you're like, wow, one day like that a month can transform your entire business. And so I'm just honored and excited to be able to offer that service. There's one more question because we just rolled into it about a minute ago when you're in that yes. sentence. I'm like, as entrepreneurs, you, it, it's almost like a hidden skill that you know you're part of because what you said, it just drops on your lap. Like certain things, and I'm going to use this for example, I have Shopify stuff behind the scenes with apparel and all that stuff. All of a sudden, I'm waking up one day and, and, and one guy's like, hey, go talk to this person, which would be me. I'm like, when did I become the specialist on that? It's just, we get so focused on our own little world that specialist, not say specialist, but like the tab of, Hey, this person does it great. You really don't recognize it until someone reverses that and throws the spotlight back on you. Yeah. And if I can take that full circle to what everything we've talked about here today is the way that that happens naturally without trying to sell and without trying to push and not the selling is pushing, but like, you know, without that kind of like, okay, I'm putting this out there to have those types of opportunities come to you comes from showing up with confidence authentically in your content so that your audience knows who you are, what you do and goes, I need help with this. Do you offer that? Can you, can you help me with that? Cause I know you're the person. I just, I just don't, I haven't seen that you offer something like this and it's what I need. And it's like, yeah, actually I can do that. And that would be a phenomenal thing. I'd love to offer that to the rest of my audience. Thank you so much for thinking of me. But all that comes back to is showing up as you because then people know you, they like you, they trust you, and they're looking for opportunities to be in your, your ecosystem, to be in your atmosphere. And I'm going to transition this to the end here, guys, because she, she just dropped, she, she threw the softball out and I'm like, I have to end it here. Where can everyone reach you at? Because that was <laughs> such a beautiful transition. <laughs> I love it. Love a good transition. Uh, so you can find me at taylorproctor.com. That's T-A-Y-L-O-R-P-R-O-C-T-O-R.com. And uh, there has links to all my social media and information about all the services I offer, not just quantum power days, but I have a mastermind. I have a six weeks creating with confidence uh, content cure course. I do intuitive strengths, business blueprints, have a book club and a couple of other things. So really, if there's, if you're looking for help in confidence in your business, whether it's you as a person in your marketing, you're looking for a good community, you're helping, you're looking for those power days to push you forward. Taylorproctor.com has all the information there to help support you. And if there's not something there and you're like, I just really want to like pick your brain, please feel free to reach out. I love having discovery calls and Usually those end with me giving a ton of information and you're like, wow, I can't believe I got this for free. And it's just like, I just really enjoy helping um, business owners and coaches propel their business and lives forward. So feel free to reach out. And I was going to say, while you guys, while you guys are there, send her some more. Hey, James jokes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, actually. I get people that will send me and be like, you have to tell this to James. And I'm like, yes. So I'm always looking for more. Thank you very much for coming on the show here. Like I said, guys, it's been two years in the making and I will definitely have you back here for sure. Not another two more years. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, thank you so much, Chad. This was so fun. I've loved being able to connect with you over the last two years. And uh, thank you so much for having me. No problem. Thank you very much. Oh, hold on here. Stop. Sure.